Hey, you guys, what's up? How's hey. it going? Sage here. We got the the internet set. Sorry, it took a couple minutes, you know? We're in this building and the internet didn't come building. in. So we're psyched to be back here on Hive Live. And I'm like really excited to be here back in my town, my community here in Portland, Maine um, with Kata Witten. And um, we're going to talk about some stuff today. Yeah. And um, wondering how you guys are doing out there. Hey. <laughs> What's up, Maine? What's up, Maine? What's up, All world? All up in county and world. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kate is someone I've known for a long time. Um, Back USM. Yeah. We were both students, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, sort of like that, yeah. for sure. Um, we met up doing some trainings and... Um, all sorts of ways. So, mm -hmm. about, got about 15, 20 years under yeah. our belt in different yeah. ways. Um, Katie's going to tell you about herself, but uh, one of the things we both do right now, anyways, that we share is we're both DJs yeah. um, in a community dance here in Portland. Portland um, community <coughs> dance. It's fun. It is fun. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of other things we have in common that we're going to be talking about today. Um, but we hope you guys are doing okay out there. It's it's a crazy week. It's a crazy couple of days. And we're going to be talking about some of that today, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but before we do, why don't you just say hi. Tell us a little bit about who you are, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Um, Thanks for being on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yes. I've been following a lot of the feeds, a mm. lot of good interviews. Yeah. I especially like the first one with the social worker who, mm -hmm. who teaches out at um, Albany. At Albany, Dr. Yes. Salome Dr. Rahim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really liked her 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 uh, interview um, and a lot of things that she segued and linked together. So that was important work. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of piggybacking on that. Mm -hmm. well, um, when you, so why don't you just say what, what's one thing you liked about it specifically, just so people can get to know that that part. Oh, that... yeah. Well, a lot. I think the thing she was talking about, so... I also work in the field of trauma. I'm mm -hmm. an SCP uh, graduate, uh, LCSW, and um, it's funny, the work of trauma called me, and maybe mm. it's through my own experiences, but some of the pieces that she talked about is the realm of trauma, where I call one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, usually I call trauma one like uh, a single episodic, two or like uh, repetitive developmental traumas. Um, long to exposures like sex trafficking, like uh, war and torture, like uh, refugee, like uh, child being locked in a cloud, you know, mm -hmm. so like years Perpetual, of stuff. Perpetual, chronic. Yes, chronic, yep. Yeah. And then trauma three, um, I categorize as the historical, which is also about uh, the trends and how we um, how we pass on. So some of those things she was talking about. So they got social learning in there. You got learning, um, uh, learned behavior. Mm -hmm. So like uh, a classic example, I love what Dr. Joy DeGoy's work, mm -hmm. uh, post-traumatic slave you know, syndrome. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. syndrome. Dr. Joy DeGoy. Uh, DeGoy. DeGoy. De uh, yeah. Luray. Mm -hmm. She uh, talks about this collective healing, enduring mm -hmm. collective healing, because mm -hmm. it's not just like a black thing, but it's a societal thing. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And so um, what I liked about the interview is her peak talking about her own personal understanding, particularly of the inter um, intergenerational trauma. So mm -hmm. like uh, you could be having a visceral response to something, not quite sure what it is, um, and it may be stuff that are coming through. Um, Dr. Joy talks about one of the chronic things you'll see is um, in the black community, one of the things she talks about is, is uh, exaggerated response, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, to something. And that's always about, <laughs> you know, if you're always like this, mm -hmm. living in a situation like this, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and so then you're, as an enslaved African in the conditions, you're always jacked. Your nervous system is always jacked, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so then we have to think about parenting. Mm. And then how the parents respond, mm. right? And a lot of it's about fear, so mm -hmm. things like, right? And so then we, so then how does one grow up with that thinking? That's learned behavior, that's social learning theory. So mm -hmm. then we go around thinking, yeah, that's how I respond to everything. Mm -hmm. So that's how the intergenerational behavioral patterns also get passed. You see this with survivors of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. you, and they've tracked this. That's um, right. Uh, so, it, and it's what's really interesting about America is that we still are fighting about making that connection yeah. as a result of 
post-traumatic slave syndrome, but not also for the enslaved African perspective, mm-hmm. but also for white Americans who are still very much locked in um, what, again, Dr. Joy talks about, the cognitive dissonance of it. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the internalized racial oppression, which has its own cognitive dissonance locking into it. Mm-hmm. So it's a pretty collective enduring, as she says, and healing. Mm-hmm. So that's why I liked... Salome's uh, in- interview, because she was talking about her own mm-hmm. experience, um, her lineage mm-hmm. as an mm-hmm. African-American, mm-hmm. Um, and right. healing from trauma. Exactly. And, and what, com- what came up for her and her experience in the real time but that was really based in a in a much you know in a time farther back. Right. So the implications of that behavior, <laughs> how it shows up today. So, for example, at USM, University of Southern Maine. Sorry, University yep. of Southern Maine. In um, we were trained as anti-oppression peer educators by Rebecca Sock Beeson. Yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca. Oh, she's okay. one of she's a PhD. Yeah. Yep. And I'm from actually, the Native community. From the, from the uh, Penobscot. Yeah. Uh, um, and so. Oh, the Penobscot or Passamaquoddy. You know, I'm going to get, I'm going to say, I don't recall right now because my brain is switching, but I'm going to give props to Penobscot and Passamaquoddy right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that work, she had us take these incidents of things that happened to us on campus, and I'm going to relate this to one of her incidents, uh, Dr. Um, Sam, the woman we're talking about in... Uh, Dr. Salome Sal- Rahim. Dr. Rahim. Rahim, okay. Mm-hmm. My personal experience, why I could relate to her, Mm -hmm. was, and it still happens today, Mm -hmm. the effects of particularly white women, which is different than black women or women of color, Mm -hmm. who, with permission, will reach out Mm. and touch my locks, Mm -hmm. or or be very inquisitive Mm -hmm. about, well, what is that? How do you do that? And they really... There's this perception that they're being, I don't know, inclusive or mm-hmm. something like that. And next thing you know, you got like, how do you wash it and blah, blah, blah. And so mm-hmm. um, at the time, my visceral response to that, you know, I was trying to like, well, first of all, there's boundary stuff and that's not how right. we relate. So there's that entitlement that, that entitlement. as a white person, I could touch you. Yes. Just without even asking. asking right. And, and then, that's me being kind. Right, right, right. 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 And, that, and that you could touch, even touch my hair. Right, um, right. And so... And then we linked it back to some characteristics of being on auction blocks. Mm, mm, feel so that. there's a deep, viscera, generational thing mm-hmm. that I'm not front low, like cognitive yeah. of it, but the reptilian limbic brain is still, yeah. and, and the hip- hippocampus, like all that's like going, yeah. right? Because that's stored, that is stored generationally. Right, that type of terror, trauma, objectification, mm-hmm. manipulation of body, mm-hmm. of person, of mm-hmm. um, population mm-hmm. uh, in that history mm-hmm. lives. It, the memory still lives inside the body the until body it's completely. Knows, as Dr. Van mm-hmm. Cup, right? The mm-hmm. body keeps That's the right. score. That's right. Right. So yeah. here we are, like yeah. in real time. That's like, right. And we can talk about this all in like, you know, and and like therapeutic practice. But here it is, right now, right every day, right now. in our faces. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. So, and so I was bringing that uh, narrative up to say that that's what resonated mm-hmm. for me, Doctor Reem, mm-hmm. um, interview. And I was like, "Yep, that's exactly the stuff yeah. that still continues to has to be unpacked." Yeah. Uh, you know, decoupled. Yeah. I'm um, using the the somatic experience. Yeah, language. unlinked. Unlinked. Yeah. Um. Uh, and, felt and felt, yeah. right? And even the acknowledge of the felt sent, like, like, like to even be like, why am I flipping out? Like, why am I? Right. Like, why am I? Right. It's like irrational, yeah. but it's happening. Yeah, but it's happening. Yeah. And then you get the top of the labels. Oh, angry black woman, like all works, like mm-hmm. all that, all that crazy mm-hmm. stuff, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, whew, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have to go through the layers of that yeah. to be present. So, actually, mm-hmm. and I think she said this. Um, to be present even here now yeah. with that history and doing the work that yeah. I do is 10 snaps. <laughs> and nine, 10. That's a lot more than that, but I appreciate the 10 snaps. Right, because it's just the layers that you're mm-hmm. holding. We're all holding, mm-hmm. and you're holding, mm-hmm. the black community's holding, mm-hmm. the native community's mm-hmm. holding. Mm-hmm. And it's... It's a collective. That's why I like mm-hmm. Dr. Joy's, Joy's uh, book, you know, 
post-traumatic slave syndrome, the, the enduring and collective healing enduring. Because it's not just, we can't keep saying it's a black and white. It's a collective uh, experience in this. Yes, there's some specifics to me as a person of African heritage descent mm -hmm. and of Native American descent or of Asian descent. I mean, we got our whole history of the Chinese and the mm -hmm. Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, sure. first ex the first the uh, first immigration law was a Chinese Exclusionary Act. People mm -hmm. forget that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a deep history, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the piece that's important uh, for white Americans is that piece that they're locked into this collectively because you have to make reason for the behaviors and actions of yourself into today, but also the justification for the acts and the behaviors and the laws. We're not just talking about slavery, we're supposed to get over it. We're talking about reconstruction mm -hmm. period. We're talking about Jim Crow, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like these lineages. Mm -hmm. And so even, I'm going to use this word, the white psyche mm -hmm. is going chaotic and trying to figure mm -hmm. out, that's the cognitive difference, mm -hmm. like where do I fit into this in my own humanity? Mm -hmm. That's right. How do I justify? <laughs> yeah. How do, right? Yeah. And so those are questions that never get unpacked. Yeah. So I can't imagine what's happening for that spirit and soul. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And in this moment, right. in every moment, but in this moment right now. Right. For sure. Yeah, yeah. How did, I mean, there's like the whole spectrum of like the denial still. Mm -hmm. the, the Well, the pain with it. I mean, right? Because we talk about, and I'm going to make something very clear. Mm -hmm. With pain, with denial is real pain. Mm -hmm. or, and so the denial is one of those layers that we cope, the survival strategy. Yeah. Well, I also, I mean, I, I think pain, but I also think supremacy. I mean, when you're, when you've been used to and entirely, you know, that you get so many things with yes. just by nature of the color of your skin, um, you get used to those things mm -hmm. and you, then you think you should have those things, mm -hmm. you know, right. Because safe. of the, well, it's not just that it's the laws that That's then right. said that. That's right. Right. Yeah. The laws that said you could own properly or not own property. You could walk safely in the street. You could have guns. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and not be questioned. Yes. So right. all those pieces is what built to the white supremacy. That's right. Ideology. That's right. Right. Yeah. And then sort of embedded in that is like it's, you know, as, as a white person, just the first layer of defense. I mean, who wouldn't want to defend entitlements and right. being able to feel better than somebody else like mm -hmm. you sort of think oh why would anybody want to think that but that is how i have been conditioned mm -hmm. that is how my lineage has mm -hmm. been conditioned mm -hmm. so to even just slow that down mm -hmm. and 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 unpack even my the ways that i've been in denial mm -hmm. the ways that i've been conditioned mm -hmm. never mind getting to work on mm -hmm. how to contribute to actually mm -hmm. not only unpacking but undoing right you know yeah i mean i'll give you a nice <laughs> example how that showed up when i worked at uh uh I was, I was a case manager um, at Preble Street, um, and we had the courtyards. It's, you know, the courtyard is the place where everybody hangs out up front. Mm, Preble Street is the local uh, Homeless, soup kitchen, social shelter. service. Yep. Yeah. So it's the, it's the day shelter because they have a night. They have a men's night and a woman's night. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our jobs was to go out in, like, uh, I would call it man, woman, <laughs> the courtyard. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that was about, you know, confiscating bottles checking in on people, saying hi to, um, just kind of like going out in the courtyard. And I remember one time we had, there was a guy drinking on site, and, you know, we had to confiscate the bottle. And I remember the thing that came out of his mouth. This is a homeless guy, you know, he hadn't taken baths in weeks, got his bottle. And his defense back to me, and I'm, you know, I'm going to try to moderate the, the language was like you black such and such mm -hmm. you go back to Africa or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and at that moment like I was floored mm -hmm. but I understood the place of power and privilege mm -hmm. that this person felt mm -hmm. right because of that training that ideology we're speaking about mm -hmm. right so it, and that to me was like wow here I am helping you or doing my job, you come into the shelter, and now you're gonna call me on that. You're mm -hmm. gonna sit. You're gonna wow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? But that's the place mm -hmm. where people feel comfortable to go back to. Yeah. In terms of white privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's happening. I mean, we're seeing that 
everywhere now. Yes. I mean, not that that hasn't no, been everywhere. No, 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 but I see, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, right. yeah, right. We're seeing that more and more surfaced. Um, but right. that default for a white person, yes. you can always go back and you can say, I'm better than you. Right. Like, don't forget it. Right. You know, even if you you think you're, you know, and especially when. Right. Because, it's, and it's that <clears throat> adjective word, you black. That's it right. It always starts with that. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, so we got work to do. <laughs> right. We gotta we gotta keep slowing it down, unpacking it internally in our communities and then right. together. Right. Yeah. Right. Which probably then segues into where we are today. Yeah, let's talk about a little bit about I mean you've been saying we, we talked a little bit beforehand about this moment in time, mm -hmm. what's happening for you, what's happening with your clients, mm -hmm. what what you know, I feel like you you've seen you know, you're a parent, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Let's just, tell, just yeah. tell us a little bit about who you are. So I'm a parent yep. of, of two beautiful men that I've raised in Maine. Mm. Um, uh, uh, um, as a single parent, two uh, men of color in Maine. Uh, i am also been a part of, I've been on the receiving end of a lot of the, the, so I have both sides, like the social service. When I first came to Maine, like how I started, what the things that I needed to support me and my family. Mm -hmm also been working in the trenches you know mm -hmm. so there's all that piece um sure i have a practice today i'm working with a wide variety of people um uh but and also to say i think it's important that i start this journey into education here in maine at the age of 32 which i think is a different entryway than someone maybe 20s or something into education mm -hmm. right and raising two boys so like trying to be a parent trying to go to school trying to be De digest all these concepts as a, becoming a social worker, right? And mm -hmm. like, what does that mean? And in terms of social justice, one of the biggest things I was always drawn to in the field is the social justice component. But we didn't speak a lot about that mm -hmm. in social work school. It was mm -hmm. kind of like this thing mm -hmm. that you did. And, and I remember we'd ask questions like in policy, social welfare policy classes, like, yeah, I'm like, like, da, da, da. you're like, so what happens if you're so like, so what if you are working for an agent and you, and, um, you want to go out and protest or do something, you know, you know, no, you could be arrested. No, if the agency says you can't, you can't. And I'm thinking, well, well, wait a minute, don't, doesn't the values of a social worker supposed to trump all that stuff? Mm -hmm. So I remembered like just trying to understand my role, mm -hmm. the role of social justice, because so, social work is supposed to have a social justice component mm -hmm. as well. But unfortunately, the way I see it, um, I, I feel, um, it's a pretty conservative mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. um, uh, pretty liberal approach, mm -hmm. and um, anything outside of that would be considered radical and you're on your own. Mm. That's been your experience. That's been my experience mm -hmm. in, in social work. And, and I've come up against that even in institutions, agencies, when you would ask the hard questions like, so how are we, with budget cuts or populations, how are we supposed to serve or what do we need, you know, and then we, it's all about the money. The, I don't want to dish social work, um, but I do think that it's important if, if social work is supposed to have a social justice component, then we need to do a better job as a profession and as institutions mm -hmm. to be uh, helping individuals and collectives figure out how to do the social justice piece Mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. right now we're seeing people as you know the trump okay so we got trump elected as president and, and groups are out there like protesting this like these marches all over the place okay but you're seeing a lot of dysfunction in these marches okay okay what do you mean um so i'm working with a lot of clients who are actually coming back from marches who are participating or helping to organize and there's like this energy, like, yeah, March, but there's like no follow through. There's no understanding of goals, objectives. What are we doing? The big picture, like the mo mobil mobilization. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's because no one's there teaching you. Mm. Or where's the organization that mentor to me? It's a great opportunity for social work to be part of that. Yes. Um, in a very real way. Yes. Um, not... Uh, surface way mm -hmm. um uh, uh you know so i'm so i'm watching the affect of this yeah the or effect of this on people individually who are trying to make a difference and now feeling confused wheels are spinning 
there's a lack of, of um, I'm hearing another person talking about how there is a lack of accountability of even whiteness within the organizations around, um, yeah, we can get out and go do this, um, but what are we examining um, our own privilege? It's not about cultural competency anymore. It's about cultural humility. Mm. Maybe it's a new, it's a new term, well, it's a newer term, mm. and which requires a lot of self-reflection. Mm. Um, cultural humility. Yeah, which requires a lot of self-reflection mm. and that always that critical dialogue, critical analysis, which is what critical education is supposed to be about, like, mm. The benefit, who benefits, who suffers, and the impact, and what's our long term goal, and what's the best way to achieve. But we have to have those pieces which are, aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting things like there's almost like this yeah, you gotta be the march. What do you mean you weren't at the march? Mm -hmm. We were there, but then we, when we get to the march, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What are we going back home to mm -hmm. do? Mm -hmm. One of the questions that I, I think I saw on Facebook is like, someone said, yeah, the march is great, but are you going home into your families mm. at the tables? Are you talking to your aunts and uncles? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where the revolution starts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or the evolution. Yeah. Let's be real about that. Right. Yeah. Um, so the evolution, if it's really at home, then those hard discussions, we need to be, that's the cultural even humility coming like, we to be able to go home mm -hmm. and talk to <laughs> I'm gonna use the Trump fathers or brothers at home. Oh yeah. I, right? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. Um our own partners. Yeah. Like what time is it? I mean that is mm -hmm. the mobilization mm -hmm. that builds uh, uh the movement I think in a very uh, fundamental yeah. way, right? Yeah. Um and it's interesting as a black woman in this too, I'm not down with the marchers, not because I'm not in protest, but it's like, there's all, there's this assumption too, I think around like, no, Trump's in and, and we got, and women's and we didn't let this pre woman president and we got to, but it's like, yo, where was all that too with the black lives matters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that type of energy mm -hmm. yeah because then it switched to all lives matter right right and before the black lives matter there's been a whole bunch i remember the first a uh, couple of years back the jasper texas the guy was dragged by mm -hmm. but there's been like emmett like just like been lineages of this stuff yeah so it's it's like it's almost like yeah. First of all, I knew he was going to get elected. I'm, I just knew the way that things were. Um, and also our own arrogance in this country mm. is what got him elected. How so? What do you mean? Um, you know, uh, the arrogance of the liberal, uh, I'm going to put it out there, liberal democratic um, uh, machine. Machine. What do you want to call it? You yeah. Have to think, you know, the arrogance of like, oh, he's not going to give whatever, da, da, da. But they also, the Democratic Party hasn't done their own cultural humility mm. assessment about themselves. Mm. Mm. And so when we hold up people like Hillary, which has a lot of uh, contradictions, mm -hmm. political, financially, mm -hmm. and holds us up to America... And when we dismantle things for like uh, Bernie or Jill Stein uh, platforms mm -hmm. in the hopes of swallowing everybody to this person and also shoving down the throat around, well, we know these political implications about the, the Democratic Party or the Clinton Party, but yet we're going to put this up anyway. Mm -hmm for you to choose. And I think American people, I've heard like people are saying, you know, we're tired of that. Mm -hmm. And I also heard a lot of people who said that they would have voted if, if, if for example, Bernie was there or Jill was there, they would have voted for those guys mm -hmm. if they, if that was a, if that was accessible mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Right. That was a choice. So then that tells me people are not stupid. Mm -hmm. Right. That people are actually trying to ask the hard question. This is now we're going back into the bigger political party and the culture and, and place. And that lets us say to me, okay, 
So we're, as a, as a culture, that maybe really are, this is where I get the optimist, that we're going to, there's, a, there's an opportunity here. Okay. Right? But now we're like, I think we missed it. And yes, we're doing an anti-Trump rally and that whole thing. But we still are not, we're, we still, we, we missed a step. Mm -hmm. I guess the step is that piece that I'm talking about, the real grassroots, that cultural humility piece around, you know, instead of saying to me, why didn't you go to, like, instead of me being quiet in a group with other white women who was talking about the, the march, I'm talking about my peers now, um, and I'm quiet, why don't you ask me, I'm curious, I noticed you had to say anything about the march, mm -hmm. um, you know, like to hear your perspective, but I mean, really hear your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because my comeback will be like, I don't think you want to hear my perspective. Yeah. Right. Because my perspective is going to start from a big historical point mm -hmm. that still needs resolution mm -hmm. in order to us to get to the full connectedness and mobilization that's required mm -hmm. to take back our country. Mm -hmm. You want to say it like that. Yeah, that's one way to say it, but <laughs> it's really to, to evolve. To evolve. It's really what I heard you say before. Right, 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 you right. Know, to really evolve. I mean, whatever, the whole idea yeah. of a country. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yes, so <coughs> thank you for helping me clarify yeah, that for sure. point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a hard, so I, I remain silent mm -hmm. in these circles mm -hmm. because it isn't safe for me to, first of all, voice my difference of opinion without being attacked, without then having to justify. And that's why we got the whole, whole all lives matters now piece, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then it's like, people shut up, like, really? Like, we're like, you're really going to go there. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's never been about all lives. In fact, why do we even have to have black lives matter? I mean, that's really the critical question. Mm -hmm. And this is a question that we've been asking since 1300. Mm -hmm. Black lives matter. African lives matter. Mm -hmm. And it still has not been resolved. Yeah, I can feel that so deeply in my body right now. Yeah. When you when you say it that deeply yeah, and clearly. That's, and I think and once and that's another thing. If we understood that, yeah. We would better understand the direction of how we got to where we are today as a mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And I always do when I do dismantling racism workshops or deconstruct whatever you want to call it, I always go back to the class piece. And I say, people, if you want to study, if you want to understand our economics, we have to go back to the slave trade. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to mercantilism that came, the 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 the, um, the sponsorship, if you may, the 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 money that brought the people over to America to survey and to uh, uh, assess what Indian what lands they were going to take, like all that. That was all commissioned by kings, mm -hmm. right? And then the thinking of how we were going to have our settlements here, right? And then the indentured servant too. Like, this is some deep stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, deep. Debtors' prisons, those deep. We, we got that today with student loans and, and credit card debts. We are those indentured servants today mm -hmm. and America keeps tripping mm -hmm. on the race thing I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's not prevalent but the whole racism piece and the and, and oh black could get over it, that they're missing the understanding of how we got to where we are today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. didn't we take all take history 101 macroeconomics 101 or microeconomics and I'm just wondering we're so educated but we're not educated mm -hmm. that's the truth that's right <laughs> it, it, it floors me. Yeah. And so when I get, when I think about these trainings, I think we have to understand those interconnected relationships to how we are, again, why we're still acting, mm -hmm. really acting out of cognitive, frayed nervous systems, jostled realities, threatened. Mm -hmm. Everything we thought we knew wasn't or is or now mm -hmm. I have to contend with it. And that's where we get into the white guilt or, or black rage that's just saying, I'm tired mm -hmm. of explaining everything to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, can I ask yes. you just to, 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 to keep on this, on this flow mm -hmm. and talk about how this shows up 
in um you know as a ther- as a so- as a social worker like you know kind of just bringing it into well, like yeah as a prep so, so as a as that's what I gave you a big macro and historical which is which is exactly what we need to do right right so and see, that does help me when I'm working with trauma specific because I got the trauma one two three yeah love that and which is particularly the historical and the intergeneration how things have passed. so that framework yeah as a clinician yeah helps me to help people um, uh, with that burden yeah, for white, black, women. I'm just um, going to pause and I'm going to yes. go back over trauma one, two, yes. and three for people who didn't mm-hmm. see it at the beginning. So so as I understand, mm-hmm. when you the con, part of the lens that you come in with mm-hmm. around trauma is trauma one is acute events. Um, oh, just got to press that button. Mm-hmm. Um, trauma one is acute events, one-time events mm-hmm. that happen, a car mm-hmm. accident or getting screamed at or, mm-hmm. you know, a terrible hate crime. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an acute event. Um, trauma two is chronic or developmental, mm-hmm. like long-term episodic. Right. Like, if you're yes. in a sex trafficking ring for a couple of years, yeah. or uh, you're a refugee that has endured mm-hmm. many cycles, developed child, ne- uh, child neglect, abuse, like child that, right. abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something that goes over duration of time. Mm-hmm. And then trauma, the trauma level three is um, historical and transgenerational. Absolutely. Which is kind of like the background. And societal. That's right, and societal. Because we got the microaggressions mm-hmm. that happen every day. That's right, right, right. That's right. Which right. are sort of both two and three. Right. So when people come see me, especially around the trauma <clears throat> pieces, I have those three lenses. And I, I think it's very helpful when a person is like understanding like, whoa, that's why I'm feeling impacted and things are so heavy and weighed on me. Like, I have to deconstruct a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff, it's like I tell them, you got that that chest from your grandparents. You get to look in that chest and see what things you want to pick, mm-hmm. keep, mm-hmm. and what things you want to give back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Totally. Because you don't have to take it all. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a nice, I mean, it's a nice idea, but yeah. you kind of did inherit it all in, well, an, yes. in an unconscious way. Absolutely. And you got to take that trunk out and you got to say, sort oh, it. wait, my anxiety might not totally be mine. Because if I think about it, actually, you know what? My dad was really anxious and my grandfather was extremely mm-hmm. anxious. And actually, there was some violence in there, too. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. oh, my rage isn't mm-hmm. just mine or mm-hmm. my anxiety mm-hmm. isn't just mm-hmm. mine. And then to take it out, mm-hmm. look at it. And start to mm-hmm. slowly be able to not only in your mind and emotions, but in your body yes. to viscerally be like, first of all, it's possible that I don't have to live with this because chances are you live with it you're unconsciously yes. your whole life. Yes. And so then you got to wake up a little yes. bit and say like, oh, this was theirs. And you know what? It was appropriate mm-hmm. for the time that they were living Probably in. Probably a survival tactic. That's right. And, and it may be appropriate for the time mm-hmm. that I'm living in too right, right. now. So, right. but then that's, that's a whole different thing yeah. around like creating agency to have some choice over that, yes. you know, and, some and understanding tools. what you're doing and why you're doing. That's right. Right. right? Which is like, a whole different like thing. I'm starving right now. Yeah. Everything that's shut. The system is shut. Down. I'm going to go to the store and rob some stuff. And I know this, and they, but I'm going to do it because I need the food for my family. Yeah. That's a survival skill. Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm going to keep doing it after, yeah. but it's what I need to do right now because, uh, this is what we saw in Hurricane Katrina. Mm-hmm. Like the looting. Totally. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a whole different story. Who mm-hmm. got, who was looting, who was surviving? Yeah, right. Right? Right? And it was always mm-hmm. deemed that the black person was looting, whereas the white person, again, that cognitive framework mm-hmm. of white supremacy, that's how right. that played out. That's right. Right? And so, but look at the internalization. Let's go back for a minute. The internalization, I think, is a piece that gets missed. So the, the little brown kid of color who internalizes those images every day on TV. Mm-hmm. The brown people are looting. The brown yeah. people are looting. Yeah. The brown people are angry. The brown people are the ones we got to protect ourselves. We got to cross that bridge. We got to protect ourselves. Those brown people don't come over the bridge on this side who are just looking for food. We're going to shoot up. We're going to tell them no. Mm-hmm. Right? So, uh, who? Mm-hmm. So how does a little kid deconstruct all those pieces? Well, when they don't have the cognitive capacity to Right. Yet. And when their parents are dead tired working two or three jobs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I do think that there was a time when we had more availability to our elders and extended mm-hmm. family members mm-hmm. to help us deconstruct that. You know, I remember the grandma said, baby, no, it's okay. You are somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, you are mm-hmm. somebody. Don't you ever let them, right? Yeah. And um, the way our families are fragmented all the places... 
we don't have that as much accessible. So those were some of the natural healthy systems within communities. Right. And that were in isolated communities of color that had to band together. Yeah. Right. Um, so the benefits of some of those communities was some of that stuff. For sure. Right. For sure. Some of that resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's been more fragmented now. Yeah. yeah. And we're all feeling that, right? As we're all, economics are driving everybody migrating mm -hmm. all over. We're like refugees and, and going all over trying to find better jobs. We're doing this in the United States, leaving one state. I mean, right? Right. right. It's not so foreign. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah. 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 And what's the sacrifice of that when you mm -hmm. leaving that family here, East Coast, whatever? Yeah. Uh, ooh. Yeah, that's a lot. We're, we're more and more tired. Yeah, we sure are. Yeah, yeah. What is that doing to our psyches and our souls and mm -hmm. our abilities to show up? Yeah. For our kids, for mm -hmm. ourselves. Right. Yeah. Come it's on. high impact. It is. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Nobody, I don't think anybody gets a pass. Nobody gets a pass. Yeah. And that's the piece that we forget. Mm hmm. And that's why I like. Dr. Joy Luray's book, like the, the enduring the collective healing, the the, the, the 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 collective trauma and the collective healing that has to happen simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's what I'm all about. Yeah, I'm so glad. I mean, I feel like you've always had such a, I've always appreciated your vision and clarity. Um, of course, sp specifically about the historical trauma pieces and mm -hmm. the way that you understand them and bring them to opportunities for education um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, to your clients and to the families that mm -hmm. you work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to start to wrap up in the yes. next 10 minutes, but um, I'd love to just transition yes. into your thoughts about like, so for folks out there mm -hmm. that are, I mean, a lot of folks I know, we're, you know, struggling with mm -hmm. the stress, with the um, intensity of mm -hmm. economics. I'm going I'm to give you something. There is, um, I wish I could have brought her book over. Uh, there's a woman named... Uh, Alvera, uh, the woman who glows in the dark, I think it is, Alveras, and it's a old Aztecian formula from a Kulandera mm. uh, community for about spiritual and emotional and physical health. Mm. And the thing I keep working with people about is like this pie. Mm -hmm. It's 100%. Okay. And the Aztecian old formula said that... Um, when you took that 100% pie, that 52%, <laughs> that 52% is about the evolving self. Okay. Uh, that 26% should be about families and relationships. 13% should be about community. Mm. And 9% should be about universe. Mm. And it's a very, when you first see it, it kind of throws everything you know. But here's, here's what I'd like to say to that point. If we are each working on our 52%, our evolving self, mm -hmm. that, that means a lot of things like paying attention to our sacred contract. What are we here to do? Mm. Um, our health, the maintain, really paying attention mm. to the quality of who I am, those type of strengths, those things, those, those real things. We talk about the joy, joy, joy uh, of being alive and alive mm. and embodied, right? Mm -hmm. All that's the 52%. And people think, particularly as women, 26%, like most women when I do the exercise with, they are like the 9%, mm -hmm. right? The family's got 52%, mm -hmm. particularly, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to think about what's happening when you are on the 9% and everything else is before you, right? Mm -hmm. So just imagine, even in a relationship, mm -hmm. if two people were working on their 52%, mm -hmm. their embodied, like their things, their things, right? Then that's why that makes sense about the 26%. You only need because the real truth is that when you're in mm -hmm. that groove, that mm -hmm. changes the chemistry yeah. of you and that person. They, you got to show up effortlessly yeah. and enjoy yeah. each other, right? And there's so much wellness and there's so naturally. Much, yeah. Yeah, because you're you 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 fifty two percent you're taking responsibility for, yes. and you're bringing that in yes. every relationship. And imagine if that was the if that was the foundation for every social movement. In fact, we would have a whole different society. Mm-hmm. If we really let that sink in 
the body for a moment, like you mm. just did. Yeah, you felt, <laughs> you felt, I was like, mm, okay, right. I'm going to do that. Right, because mm. the truth is, if I believe in water and eating sustain, and I'm living that and all that, mm -hmm. and you're that, then we, we know what that's about, mm -hmm. and we would be making policies or doing work mm -hmm. different. It wouldn't be driven by the, the bottom line dollar, it'd mm -hmm. be driven from that place. Mm. Yeah. So when I work with people to ask that question, I do use that formula. Beautiful. Um, and we just map out what is in that 52% okay. all the time. What things can you take care of? What things can you not take care of? Yeah. Right? And I, let me tell you about this. As a galaxy, when we think about the galaxy and the Milky Ways and the stars, each of them are doing that 52%. They're doing their own thing, which then collectively makes up this wonderful galaxy. And I'm just blown away by that. Mm hmm Right? Yep. Woo! Mm -hmm. So that's what gives me hope. Mm -hmm. That's what gives me grounding and mm -hmm. is to remind myself being at 52%. It doesn't mean that the world, even if the world saves is radical, was to go away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm so much believe in that peace that there's no, there's, I know that life is infinite. Mm -hmm. I know that, um, uh, it's just a transition. Mm. I know I'm getting a little esoteric there, uh, but it's an important piece. I think I remember when I'm really trying to get into my 52% and I'm struggling with mm -hmm. it. And I'm struggling with the person down the street or how come that person is not doing this? And, blah, 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 blah. and I have to go back to self. Mm. And I have to say to myself, what are you doing mm -hmm. today in this breath? Mm -hmm. Right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Forget about that. Mm -hmm. And can I trust the next person to take their own inventory mm -hmm. to do their stuff? Mm -hmm. And can I trust that they're doing the best they can in this mm -hmm. moment, even if they all come in, you black bitch in my mm -hmm. face? Mm -hmm. I don't want it. Yeah. <sighs> but mm -hmm. I know that's about you. Yeah. Which is part of if you have your 52%, you'll be able to have a stronger boundary. Yeah. And not retaliate or well, not internalize. And not internalize. Yeah. Retaliate is different. Like, there's a, there's a thing around protection. Yeah, well, protect. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not retaliate. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, yes. Protect. Yes. Is, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Protect, yeah. Yeah. But not take it on. Not not meet force with force. Just be, be, yes. be in a way that your 52% is preserved. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously yeah. it's going to take a hit, but yeah. if you're cultivating it, you can yes. take a little. We're going to have to take hit. I mean, we're yes. taking hits all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I mean, this is such an exciting tool. I want to make sure that I uh, post the book and maybe mm -hmm. find a little bit yep. of a worksheet and I'll post mm -hmm. about that too because I'm sure people out there are mm -hmm. really interested in this as a tool. I think it's really yeah. exciting. And I think what you said about what if at all the marches and mm -hmm. the social movements right now, mm -hmm. we're using a model like this mm -hmm. to think about, to really not only do all of the change work that mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out how to do, mm -hmm. but that the change work mm -hmm. is saying, 52% here. That's right. 52% here. That's right. 52% here. Which then, Look at that. You're getting the yes. <laughs> Which place. then gets into your assets, right. your God given, your sacred contract, mm -hmm. your strengths. Mm -hmm. Right. Which what is I'm what here we to do. all are possess, uh, have the ability to cultivate and supposed to, supposed to cultivate. Yeah. Yeah, and we tap the gold. Right. And when you shine, that saying about you shine, mm. you give that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right, like when you shine, you give me permission to shine. Right. Right, and then it gets bigger. That's... Yeah. And that's how change happened. Okay. That's the galaxy. That's the Milky Way blowing up. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Oh, so good. That's so good. Well, you know, to like bring light in, to bring that like the memory of, you know, and not the memory, but just all the explosions in that uh, generative mm -hmm. quantum mm -hmm. light and yeah, love exactly. and big heartedness mm -hmm. in this moment. Like, even though it feels almost contrary, right? Cognitively right. contrary yes. to the contraction right yes. now politically, um, it is actually... A deep part of the medicine that we that we need. Yeah. Yeah, it's still going. We're okay. still alive. Yeah, I don't think it's in the way. So, you know, I just maybe this is a good place to end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, I think we said it all. <laughs> I mean, what, what else? What else do you need besides poop? Um, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you for too. holding this space and elevating the vibration.
Absolutely. Yeah. And that is I'm what we... That. Um, I just want to say what you just said. Yeah. Thank you for holding space and elevating. How do you say elevating? Thank you for holding the space and of doing what you do and elevating the vibration. That is what we can each be doing for each other. So ourselves, mm -hmm. which then we do for each other. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. All right. Praise be. <laughs> Blessings. We got you. We we got you. <laughs> you guys from Portland, Maine. We love you. <laughs> so happy to be back. Thank you, Kate Wynn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people can reach you through your um, website. Uh, Good Therapy or Psychology Today. I have a Facebook page. Um, Redefine Therapy. Have directory. You gonna make your uh, list? Oh, that's right. Hello. <laughs> can find me on the high. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, thanks for holding it down up here. Um, yeah. Tomorrow we're going to be on with Laura Cher, who's an amazing body worker, a teacher, um, I don't know, bread baker, just phenomenal person. <laughs> um, really excited. We'll be on with her tomorrow around a little bit afternoon if I can get the Wi-Fi working. Yeah. <laughs> all good. Yes, yeah, all good. You guys, good. have a great day. We love you. Mwah. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.